G'day, Starlo here. Jointed swim baits, they've become the biggest thing since sliced bread on a whole range of predatory species, but particularly Murray Cod, Barramundi, Big Flathead, even Mulloway or Jewfish. But what about brim? Will a jointed swim bait like this catch a brim? I know that some guys in Tasmania have been doing quite well on them on big blue nose brim down there. So I've come out today to give them a go on our local brim here on the south coast of New South Wales. Let's see how we fare with a jointed swim bait. Ah, you can see it's already wet. That's because I've just swum it up and down here in front of me to make sure it's swimming well. And it sure is, it's beautiful. This one's one of the new Shimano BT baits and they've got such a great action in the water. It just sinks very, very slowly in this salt water. It sinks a little bit faster in the fresh and as soon as you move it, it comes to life. But I think the big trick with these jointed swim baits is not just to constantly steadily retrieve them because if you do, they just look like a perfectly healthy fish in the water. And I mean, that's going to get eaten sometimes, but we all know that sick and injured fish are far more likely to get eaten than perfectly healthy ones. So I think you're far better off to put some action into it, some stops and starts, some little stabs of the rod tip and just get that lure jinking and flashing. Let's see if my theory's right. To kick off my first ever session of swim baiting for brim, I push upstream a little and seek out some heavily shaded banks with a few likely snag piles. I've caught brim here before, so I'm reasonably confident and I concentrate on working that BT bait with lots of stops and starts. Fishing them is definitely a little bit different. It takes a little bit of getting your head around these swim baits because they don't really give you any feedback through the rod, but you've just got to believe that they're swimming. And of course, when they come into sight, you can see that they're swimming, but you don't get that vibration that you do with some hard bodies and blades. It's a bit more like fishing a soft plastic. You just have to have confidence in the lure and know that it's doing the right thing out there. Whether it's going to push the buttons of these brim, well, that's another story. With the shaded snag so far proving unproductive, I head for a wider, shallower section of the estuary with some healthy flats. It's really shallow up in here, so it's ideally suited to the swim bait. It's probably only about, well, where I'm casting, it's probably only about 50 centimetres of water. I'm sitting in about 80 or 90 centimetres, I guess, out here. It's just a bit of a flat with some weed on it. We've got reeds on the edge. It's a great spot for brim. Oh, yeah, that's one. There we go. <laughs> My first brim on a swim bait. <laughs> oh, it came as such a surprise. It was just a pause close to the boat, and next minute, I might grab the net. He's not very well hooked. Oh, that's so cool. In you go, mate. Wow, beautiful golden fish. There it is. <laughs> they do work. Swim bait brim. Ooh, I think that's going to be the first of many. What a gorgeous fish. He's not overly large, but it's just got the most beautiful golden colours. This water's quite tannin stained up here. And uh, I think that's why they take on that colour. Really yellow in the fins. Classic southern black brim. On the swim bait. <laughs> Just pinned on the outside of the, the lip. It's going to come out so easily. There we go. Ooh. A male, he's shedding some milt. Off you go. All right, let's hope that's the first of many. Got such a surprise. <laughs> I just did a pause close to the boat. I was just getting to the point where I could see the lure, and I thought I'd just pause it and see if I could see it flash. 
whack. At the far end of the flat, I'd been eyeing off another shadowy snag pile, and that's where I headed now. There's got to be one in there. Oh yes, there's one, there's one. Oh, on the big paws. Right in front of that snag. <laughs> I was starting to look down along the bank for the, the next spot. Oh, it took me by surprise. I just backed out of there. I think he's a pretty good fish. Oh. Mm, he's, not, he's not enormous, but he's a nice brim. Oh, there had to be one in there. There just had to be. Oh, I like this swim baiting. <laughs> it's a real shock when they take it. Is it just, it almost suspends on the paws. It sinks, but not overly quick. And they just um, seem to vacuum it up. Not as big as I thought he was. Probably a good thing, considering where I hooked him. He'd have got back into that snag, I reckon, if he was much bigger. Now, this one is hooked on the top of the head. He's come up underneath that lure as it slowly sunk and creamed it. What a pretty fish. He's got a bit of weight. Oh, it's close to his eye, that hook, but it's not in it. Make sure I can get it out before it does him any damage. A little chunk. Hmm. Ah, it's pretty exciting having a new lure in the arsenal for, for catching brim. I'm going to be using these swim baits a fair bit, I reckon. A gorgeous fish. Look at the colours on that against that background. Just lovely. All right, back in the water. I'll see if there's some more on these snags. Oh, too good. Had to be one in there. Had to be. It's getting quite dark in here now. Let's see if we can get another one. Oh, I tell you what, that's really interesting. This tussock in front of me. I can actually see individual different strands of reeds shaking and vibrating. There we go, look at that. There's mullet, or it could be brim, actually feeding on something on the reed stems and they're making the reeds shake. It'd be so easy to miss it. If there was any breeze or whatever, you wouldn't see it. And I don't know if you're gonna pick it up through the camera from this range, but it's actually really quite obvious to me now. It's pretty cool that I can be this close to them in the kayak. I'm probably, that's probably about a kayak and a half length away from me. And there's still obviously a fish feeding on the base of that reed pile. Now that's a good cast, that deserves a fish. It's stopped vibrating now, so perhaps the lure splashing down in there is scared, whatever it was. Really pays to just be observant for stuff like that. Oh, there's one. He ate that before I even moved it. Oh, wow. They must look so realistic in the water, these things. <laughs> it splashed down and he just ate it. <laughs> oh, it's so exciting to find a completely new style of lure, or new for me anyway, that works on brim. Would I have caught as many or more if I'd used something else? I don't know, but... Um, to me, that's not really the point. I'm just really enjoying this. <laughs> oh, I think he's the best one yet too. Three from three. I haven't got him yet, I know. He's certainly pulling hard, this one. 
I tightened that drag up a bit. I'm glad I did. He was up amongst some timber. Oh yeah, that's a little bit more solid. Wow, it's got that same style of hookup as the last one. They're obviously coming up underneath it. Treble pulled out, it was up on his forehead, but the other one, so it was like that, it was kind of laced up across his forehead, but one just pulled out. You can see the weed on there, the one's right in the apex of his top jaw, it's a little bit heavier than those last couple. Beautiful fish, all right. Ah, not one of these fish has taken it while I'm actually retrieving the lure. It's either been on a pause between retrieves or in that case, before I even got a chance to retrieve the lure. He just ate it, just like a bait, but, but fast and hard. Very, very convincing lures, obviously. I'll have to get the weed off that one. What a pretty fish. I know I say that all the time with Brim, I do love them. They're all a bit different and the gold on this one is just amazing. <laughs> you can see why coming out of this sort of country. Mm. I wonder if we can get some more. The breeze has dropped off completely. The cloud, there was a little bit of light rain before, but the cloud's kind of broken up. We're in the last hour of light. All in all, a really nice time of the day. I'm having too much fun. back in here. I think when you catch a fish like that it probably spooks an area a fair bit but I'll still put a few more in there. Oh there's another one. Next cast. Again on the pause and this time I saw the twitch in the line. It was just just like fishing a soft plastic actually. It was just a, a twitch in the line as he picked it up on the paws. Well there you go, so much for me saying that the last one probably scared him. Ah, oh, pulled the hooks. <laughs> All right, that's the first one I've dropped on the swim bait. There's another similar sized fish. Mm. This is turning into a nice little session. Oh, it's like Tasmanian weather. This changes every 10 minutes. It's raining again now, only very, very lightly. It's just a beautiful place to be at this time of the day. Not bad for winter. Everything's so quiet and peaceful and yet at any moment there's going to be an almighty wrench on this line and I'm going to have a beast on that's going to be trying to cut me off in amongst all this timber. I love that that contrast between the, the serenity and then the adrenaline. It's a big part of what brim fishing's about for me. in that light plane wants to stay away from that storm cell I reckon. Luckily I'm not too far from the car if it does start bucketing down.
Oh, oh, wow. Way out in the open. And he just absolutely creamed that. <laughs> I'm just, I was on autopilot then. Oh. I love the way they hit these things. Oh boy. Oh, I think this might be the best one. So far out from the bank, halfway through the retrieve, on one of those pauses and it's just steamed off. Great lures. I've been catching brim on lures for 25, 30 years and I'm as excited as a kid because I've found another form of lure that'll catch him. This is the best fish of the day. Oh, I hope I can get him. He's a beauty. Oh. Yeah. Just marginally the biggest one, I think. It's probably not that much bigger than the, the previous best one. That thing looks like it's gold plated. It is just beautiful. Another male, it's melting all over my leg. They'll spawn sequentially, so multiple times through uh, late winter and spring in this part of the world. Uh, and there's just no way I could kill a fish like that out of a body of water like this. Even at that size, that fish is probably 18, 20 years old, maybe more. I just think they're too good to, to kill. Look at that. Hey, the little um, soft plastic tail has gone out of the uh, the swim bait. I don't know if he ripped it out or if I lost it before that, but it doesn't seem to have made too much difference. You know, those little razor sharp hooks are just all laced up through his lips there. Uh, that has been such a good session, really. I've hooked five fish, landed four of them. And they've all been a little bit different, uh, but they've all been on that pause. And I just love the angry way they seem to hit this lure. I only got one that was a, a soft tap, and interestingly, that was the one that I dropped. So maybe he just wasn't that committed. Ooh. Don't know what shape this treble's going to be in when I get it out of here. Oh, yeah, it came out all right. <laughs> wow, the last of the sun picking up those golden colours. All right, let's get you back in, mate. Fantastic. Woo! <laughs> I've only got about 50 meters to get back to the car. I was actually starting to head back because it started to rain again and there was a big peal of thunder as well. And I thought, oh, I might just start heading home. But I thought I'd just work along the front of these reeds. And that cast, I was so far out from cover when he took it. Whether he'd followed it out, I don't know. I reckon that'll do me. That has been a really enjoyable session, trying out a new style of lure for me, for Brim swim baits check them out especially these uh, bt baits from shimano fantastic action anyway until next time this is starlo wishing you tight lines i'm gonna get home before i get wet